Well, the lamp house needs a hole in the front, about four centimeters, so just organizing that now. This take up train is five sixteenths pitch. So the distance between two roller centers is five sixteenths of an inch. Um, which is a bit specialist, but I can source this, although it's not that cheap. However, do I want a long chain going from here through to the take-up, which is going to be somewhere back here, behind the lamp house? That's quite a long run for a thin chain. Um, Probably okay, though it might be flapping about a bit, but there are some alternatives. You'll remember that on this big motor, there were three pulleys. Only one of which will be used for the drive, probably the big one. Which means I could take a belt off one of the other pulley wheels. To work the take up, a couple of holes in the old box. And providing the clutch in this take-up system can be made to operate reasonably well, smoothly, probably that would do the job instead of the chain. Just connect it with an extra pulley wheel added instead of that sprocket. Maybe. And there is a plan C actually. Plan C would be to use this, what was the old butcher's motor, assuming it's working, which it probably would be, uh, to use that mounted inside the new box cabinet as a separate pulley system take-up motor. That could come off a separate speed controller, which would give me a, a lot of control on the speed and fierceness, if you like, of the take-up. Uh, which is kind of an interesting possibility. So we've got three possible plans. So these old Meccano girders can be used as guardrails for the lamp house because when the lamp house is here, we want it to be as close as possible to the aperture so that the light's concentrated there and doesn't spread out. But then of course you can't open the gate to thread the film, so the lamp house needs needs to be able to move back and forwards to two positions. So you move it back, thread the film, open the gate, close the gate, move the lamp house forward for operating position. Um, and these rails can have a stop, just a, a screw or a bolt in its position to stop the lamp house either way. And then through here, one of these holes, we could have a pin it goes into a hole in the lamp house to lock it for the operating position. So I'm working on that now. Well, that's the girders temporarily fitted in position and cut to length. And there's a sliding base for the lamp house. Two stop points. And uh, that all seems to be fine. And in a local junk shop, I found a suitable handle to enable the um, lamp house to be slid more easily. The lamp house is coming along. That's the back position for opening the gate. Without that fouling the lantern. And then that will slide forward to the forward stops, which will be about there. Maybe a little closer. Something like that. Just soldered the leads on this 
LED panel which I noticed in the video camera looks quite a dark yellow but in reality it is a much lighter yellow and I'm hoping it's going to be what they term the cold light version rather than the warm light version that's why I ordered anyway it's 50 watt and a 50 watt power supply unit heat sink with a computer fan and I'm just about to put some of this thermal cream gunk on here before attaching the LED and that's the condenser on should give a sufficiently narrow beam it's um, quite a pronounced parabolic dome on there so that should give us the right narrow spread for a 35mm frame let's hope uh, so that's another job done. I've made a wooden takeoff hole, now painted black, attached with brackets. And the um, spindle at the moment is, is fixed, but that's got to turn. So what I'm planning to do is um, have a metal plate there, either side of this arm, with the hole in, so that this can turn within that. And uh, a bit of pulley here, and probably driven from the one of the three, the smaller motor pulley. I've no idea what size this pulley's got to be, uh, so I'm going to make a big one from wood, and then see how that goes, and then I'll be able to work out if it needs to be smaller, and eventually buy a metal one that's the right size. So that's the take up, spring arrangement here at the moment. Um, and in order, there's no clutch system with this, I've abandoned the original take up um, spindle. So it will have a sprung metal belt, which um, if we get things right, will eventually slip as it needs to in lieu of a clutch. So the spring metal material was generally quite expensive, but I think one of those spring metal things with plastic covering that you hang curtains on will probably be okay if I remove the plastic. I'm going to have a go at that. So that's the take-up. Obviously, um, the take-up spool needs work. It's not only rusty, it's also bent. So that's got to be disassembled, de-rusted, painted, etc. And... Um, this works okay, the sliding lamp house arrangement. So that's okay. Need to change the position of the stops because at the moment when it bashes into the take up spool, so I need to put some stops down here. But um, the other side works okay, the other end stops it from hitting the mechanism. But it can be moved back. And when it's all adjusted, it'll be a lot smoother than that. And then the feed arm, it's different to the one you saw because I've abandoned that metal feed arm and made a wooden one to match the take up arm. It's got some studding in there at the moment as a spindle which is going to stay there but obviously cut to length um, with a spring behind it to give it some resistance so that the film doesn't bounce around. I think that's going to be fine. And that just fixes here with a wing nut so it can be removed very easily now when the film comes out of the gate it forms a loop and then goes over this sprocket and along and under the lamp house because there's an aperture in here for the film to go through open the other side so it comes through that slot if you like and then onto a roller which is going to be fitted to this arm so the film will actually go over the roller which will stop it from scraping on the projector base box and then onto the take up spool 
pretty rusty. It's also bent. So I have to disassemble it, get the rust off, prime it, paint it, straighten it out first. So I'm just about to position this roller arrangement where it needs to be. Um, so far I'm pretty happy with how that's all going along. So it's starting to look a bit more like a film projector. More soon.